Hello, I'm Daria, co-founder of Cellscreen IO and Cellematics. Uh, and today we have a great guest who is e-commerce entrepreneur with eight years experience in the field and also founder of e-commerce course. Uh, so we have here Jad. Um, very, uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much. Uh, and um, I guess, um, uh, brief story how we actually met. Uh, so we have analytic platform and uh, we work with your course and they have lots of students coming like for referral program uh, to our, you know, like uh, tool. Uh, and um, actually we have phone calls and uh, Zoom calls with our clients uh, and the people who come in from you, they absolutely love you. <laughs> It's great to hear that. <laughs> they actually, they are very excited about what they're doing uh, and um, they, they take it very, very seriously. Uh, and I guess the big part of that is actually you being, you know, like uh, entrepreneur, you know, like who is actually, you know, like build up the business there. So, uh, and um, I would love to know like, what is your business now looks like? What, what, what is you doing now? <laughs> Amazing. Uh, hello, Daria, and of course, thank you so much for having me today. It's my pleasure. Uh, and yes, so uh, as for the first question, how is my business doing? So uh, I do a lot of things, but when it comes to e-commerce, of course, like right now, like since like we're in Q4, uh, it's it's where every e-commerce business almost like would multiply their sales. Yep. It's because we have Christmas holidays, we have Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Thanksgiving. So Q4 is usually really good for e-commerce businesses and. Alhamdulillah, like our businesses have been doing really well when it comes on the e-commerce part. And when it comes to uh, our e-commerce program, our e-commerce engine program, actually it's going really well. Like now we have wow. over 1,600 students, as you mentioned. Uh, what's beautiful about our students is that like every day you, you see a lot of ads on the internet in which yep. people would tell you, buy my course and you'll make X amount. Buy yep. my course and you'll make X amount or you'll change your life. And, uh, and the ads are Lambos and all of this. What I had to offer to people is one thing. I told them my life was an absolute crap uh, eight years ago. And I did one, two, three, four, five. It took me almost five, six years to be able to close my family debt and to start all over, et cetera, et cetera. So instead of you passing through the same exact thing, I am setting a course where I teach you every single thing which I pass through. But in case you cannot afford it, go start the same way I started online for free. Yep. But I had to lose a lot. I had to like a lot of time and money and I had to test a lot. So if you can learn it from someone who already did it in the same exact conditions, which you are passing through right now from the same exact country or the region, then why not go and learn from them? So our course is doing well. Uh, our e-commerce businesses are going well. Maybe my only investment, which isn't going really well now is the crypto because of the crash. But yep. like crypto is a very long term thing. I believe in it. So hopefully it get better. Oh, that's great. And what about your e-commerce business? What was your first product? What is your actual niche you're working in? Amazing. I love this question. So mainly, mainly, mainly uh, to answer the niche product, because I don't want it to be as a financial advice for people. I believe that I actually have friends who are millionaires in the health and beauty industry, in the fashion industry, in the food industry, in the toys industry, in the education industry, every industry. I believe every industry or every product was made for a reason. Every product was made for a reason, but the thing is why a lot of people go and give up really fast is, is not because they don't have sales. It's because they can't find the right customers in the right way. Mm -hmm. So so like uh, if I have a makeup product yep. and all where I'm selling it or placing my ads or talking to are men, I would expect zero sales. Mm -hmm. But if I place it in the right way, in the right time, at the right place, of course I will get sales. So my favorite niche is mainly the health and beauty industry. So why? there's there's not a single reason to it, but maybe my first e-commerce experience was in the health and beauty industry. Uh, it was when I changed my life and, and it, was, it was very successful. And that's why I stick to this industry. I do have a couple of investments uh, in the interior products industry. I have things in electronic accessories, but almost 80% of my six brands are in the health and beauty industry. Our first product was actually an uh, organic tea product. I, mm -hmm. was, uh, I was partnering up with uh, another co-founder and uh, it's still live up until now, but uh, it was mainly where I started. And that's why my personal favorite industry is the health and beauty industry. But if you have another product in another industry, 
it doesn't mean that the health and beauty industry is the only industry where you can make money. I have live examples from students in, in our program. We have over 1,600 students. Everyone is in an industry. So that's it. Wow. Uh, so you're saying you have six brands. Uh, so basically, this is like six so Shopify stores. Mm -hmm. Is it correct? 100%. Uh, great. And uh, like how much revenue each store re re generate for you? And then did you start it? Amazing. So the very first store was started actually in 2015, by the end of 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, as a start, I started on WordPress up until I discovered Shopify in 2018. So I moved, uh, I back then had only three brands, so mm -hmm. I moved them into Shopify. And now everything I start is on Shopify. Uh, actually, uh, like it depends on each and, and every product, but yep. my highest selling store right now uh, in the region makes between 100 to 150k in sales every month all oh. the others range between almost 50 to 100k but USD. the highest what sorry usd right yes yes in usd <laughs> yes yeah, sorry so um so uh yeah and each one has its own shopify store all of them are 100 percent on shopify and this is it. wow that's great uh and um so how many products you have for each store for each brand like mm -hmm. and how with how many products did you start it amazing so i get asked this question a lot my preference is a one product store mm -hmm. so i love branding a one product store and uh and i'd like to clarify something that i don't drop ship i'm not saying that drop shipping is wrong or bad but me personally i prefer private labeling and if yep. i wanted to teach people something i would teach them what i'm doing all of the time so I, of course, I, I did try like dropshipping. There's a lot of successful stories there, but I believe that in, in private labeling, you have a bigger responsibility because it's kind of a bigger investment and you're actually building a brand. So, yep. so here your focus is not only the product or the money you make out of it. It's more of a brand, a product, impacting people's lives, growing, scaling it for a very, very, very long time. And I can't remember uh, a brand in which I opened and closed in in a year no almost all of them are still live up until now so um wow. <laughs> so yeah it's, it started with with uh, with one product stores and through time uh yeah and it, of course Hala, we will talk about scaling more uh i tend to add a couple of more products under them but mainly 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 every store serves one product wow that's uh that, that, that that's very impressive and you're also saying that first is like uh, one product, uh, six different websites. Mm -hmm. It's not approach that people usually can think of, especially beginners. Uh, and the second thing is like that you're very determined because you know, like lots of people, I guess they start, they think, oh, this product is not great. Oh, I can't find the right product, which is also could be the case. But uh, I, I, it's like, it's very hard, I guess, to maintain business for six different brands even though you have one product, but you know, like to run it like over a year. So I guess how this journey looks like, uh, how many time you spend for the test and what is for you criteria of successful product? Like what kind of product is can potentially be successful mm -hmm. and how you verify that it's actually uh, becoming a great trend? Amazing question. So uh, as a start, I just want to highlight something that it didn't start this way and it took me up to eight years up until I can manage those six brands. Yep. <laughs> so, so, so the whole idea here is that I started with only a brand and, mm -hmm. and, and the beauty of e-commerce is scalability. Like I come from like, or, or I know a lot of people, especially the traditional businesses or family businesses that actually have a store, a physical brick and mortar store. Yep. If you want to scale those, it's really expensive and it takes a lot of time. If you want to yep. open a new branch and another branch and a new country, with e-commerce, it's 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 very easy. It's borderless and you can start it. Of course, there's a lot of strategies that, that go um, under this pipeline of scaling, but it's much easier and much more affordable than actually scaling a normal business. So, but I don't recommend anyone starting more than one business if it's still your first experience. Yep. Like, like take your time and make sure that your very first business is a learning experience. It will teach you everything, everything, everything from A to Z from sales, from management, from operations, from ads, from fulfillment, uh, from how to talk with customers, everything. So, uh, so as a start, I used to work very, very, very hard. But now I believe 
working smarter is what needs to happen. Yep. So almost 80% of all of my stores are automated. So I hired a team, like uh, How many six people? Teams. Six. Yeah, so each brand has two people taking care of it okay. uh, on, on a high level. And then under it, of course, we have operations and fulfillment, all of this. But the thing is, is that once you train people throughout your journey, you can highly rely on them and focus on other things. So mm -hmm. I'll be honest, when I had one brand, I used to work 18, 19 hours a day on it. Wow. Now I have six brands. I barely work four hours on them or three hours on them a day, barely. Mm -hmm. Because you hire the right people who started with you from a long, long, long yep. time. And you understand that e-commerce is very scalable. And, and the beauty of automation is where it comes in handy. Like now you have chatbots, you have uh, a lot uh, of apps which take care of customer supports and fulfillments and delivery. So, so it's much more easier than how it was five, six years ago. That's for sure. Uh, and um, then you are looking into the niches. For example, you said that you one of the niches for beauty and health. Like for example, for beauty and health, you need to have certain certificates. It's like, what the criteria for you mm -hmm. and what should be criteria for beginner? Like what Perfect. kind of niches you suggest to go? That sounds great. So in the course, I actually have a full chapter, which mm -hmm. for almost an hour, I explain how to find the right product and the right industry and the right suppliers. So in one of the points, I say that there are four ways to actually choose the right product. One is passion. Like if, if I'm highly passionate about art and drawing, my e-commerce brand or my e-commerce business might be tailored based on, on my passion. I might sell um, uh, art boards uh, or paintings or art supplies. Two is to find a niche and, uh, and cater for it. Three is seasonal products. And four is to go. I don't care what product I'm selling. Uh, I, I might have a passion for it or not. I just want... I just want to sell and make money. Mm -hmm. So there are so many ways to find products. Mm -hmm. I've already explained over six ways to find and, yep. lo uh, um, and locate right products. But for me, how I used to find my like uh, a winning product. So I say two ways. Uh, and one of them is actually a secret, which I kept only for the course, but I don't <laughs> mind you sharing it as well. So my very first way is that I look for products, of course, which solve a problem. So, and this problem, a lot of people think that if I want to find a product which solves a problem, I need to find a product which cures cancer uh, or, <laughs> or solves uh, uh, like a huge problem. No, a problem, it might be entertainment. It might be, I want to find new movies to watch. So yep. I find a product which helps you choose the right movie. So as long as you're, as you're solving a gap and you're being there, it's a good to go. Two, I look for products that are, uh, are low on weight. So I look for products that weigh below two kilograms because mm -hmm. everything related to when I ship this product from China into here or, or Lebanon, and then I want to ship it to the end customer, the whole process becomes much cheaper. I look for products that aren't fragile to break mm -hmm. just to make sure I don't get into the process of refunds and, yep. uh, uh, and all of this. And uh, as for when it comes to the health and beauty products, I need people to understand that before sales, before all of this, people's safety is on top. So if you want to go and sell products, you need to make sure, especially me, I go through this process a lot because I sell in the health and beauty yeah. industry. You need to make sure that you have the right certificates and you have to test your products in at least three labs and get a certificate from a ministry of health from each wow. country you want to sell wow. in. Uh, and especially when it comes to storage and all of this, because even like a lot of people have a misconception and no products from China are bad products, not at all. Almost 80% of the products are made in China or manufactured in China. Yep. Apple phones, almost 90% of the whole production process happens in China. So, so, but inside China, you have a lot of qualities. You have like, I remember I have a product which I used to sell for $30. I used to get it for $8. I found in the same area in China, another supplier which sells it for a dollar and a half. So I could have wow. made an extra $6 per item and we've sold over 10,000. So that's almost $60,000 extra. Wow. I waved it off. I didn't take the, the entire deal because it missed two main like uh, papers, which proves that this product is good. So oh, I just okay. stick to a safer one. So please, when it comes to e-commerce or brands or any product, don't get greedy. Prioritize people's health before your pockets. Mm -hmm. And uh, and here's a strategy, which is one of hundreds of strategies which I have in the program, which which is my secret to e-commerce success in the past six years. It's not the only strategy which works, but it's the strategy which I went into, mm -hmm. which worked with me. 
who, who uh, I believe that a lot of people, I don't want to be if you want, and, and it's not a misconception or misunderstood, but that's how I see it. I see that one of the best places to be in right now is the Middle East mm -hmm. for so many reasons, for so, so, so many reasons, especially when it comes to business and e-commerce, because what we look for, which we miss in my country uh, uh, at Lebanon, is, is stability. So we don't have it. We don't have infrastructure yep. at all. We don't have a political stability, which might hinder your uh, entire business. Like I might go invest and then lose my entire business in a day, unfortunately, but hopefully it's coming back. Here in Dubai, for example, yep. you don't care about anything but work. Yep. You have the best infrastructures, you have the, the, like the ultimate free zones, which helps you. You have the best routes, you have zero tax. You have one of the best places and especially, you know, it's very easy to scale from here. So I believe we also have one advantage which relates to my strategy now. Ooh, ooh, hey, you know, like there's one of the things which we don't have here is the first movers. And usually the first movers for technology and products, new products are the states. Mm -hmm. So instead of, of reinventing the entire wheel, what I used to do, I used to go and find winning products that are booming and they just started to boom in the States. Mm -hmm. I do my research. I don't find this product being manufactured or sold Arabized or, uh, or, or locally in the region, which mm -hmm. means in Beirut, Lebanon, in Dubai, in Saudi Arabia, Jordan, all of this region. So, and I have a big advantage because those, all of those companies in the States or warehouses, they don't have infrastructure in Dubai or in Saudi or in Beirut, yep. which means if you want to buy from them, you pay at least an extra $20 on shipping and it's usually so expensive. So yeah. I find the same exact product if it's not patented, of course, I go to a Chinese supplier, I find the same exact product and I localize it under my name. So. I have a huge advantage because mm -hmm. I can, you know, I'd sell it much cheaper. And I did this exact same strategy four times and it worked every single time. As long as this product, it doesn't have a main manufacturer in your region, just go get it, Arabize it and localize it and start selling it here. And here it's much easier at shipping and fulfillments, all of this, it's very, you know, it's not easy, but it's much easier in the States or Europe or where you have high tax rates and expensive infrastructure. So yeah. I, uh, I do the strategy every single time and, and it works. Wow. So it's like, it's very interesting thing. So, uh, let's repeat, uh, first is, uh, go to your interest, right? Find something you're passionate about and, mm -hmm. you know, like look if, if there are some promising products, we also suggest, you know, like still use kind of tools because, you know, like different kind of tools, because it still helps you to understand how market works and, you know, like Elsa, like what products in the market, mm -hmm. or you even can like not using the tools, but, you know, like check in Alibaba, you know, like they have, they have like the special section, you know, like then you can see, 100%. uh, the, the, what kind of pro products are popular, but I mean, just, uh, don't think too much, just go and do like first like search 100%. second thing as you mentioned uh is like the certificates and you know like check if you need if you need them as yeah 100%. And, and maybe if, if if you think it's like too much complicated or you don't have a budget i still suggest maybe to more invest in a product and less and less you know like in certificates so if you know, uh, because like for, for what I know, like for example, for uh, pro certificate for if the, the, for UAE, it costs around uh, thousand dirhams, I guess, like this. It's like at the big, it's not a big money, but at the beginning it's also could be, you know, like you, you may need to choose uh -huh, so yes. like to take a course or make certificate. 100%. Or like to uh, like um, invest in more inventory or like to sp switch something in your product or, you know, like to, to, to get certificate. And 100%. I think maybe a uh, certificate is not the thing you, you, you want to go for. Uh, and the last thing you also said that check the products we're selling good in the US. Mm -hmm. But uh, what, what I also noticed here, um, I, we talk a lot of with the sellers. And some of the sellers, uh, the marketplace sellers mostly, they say like, oh, it's like, this is region is very difficult. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and they don't understand the beauty of the region. Mm -hmm. Because um, we, I'm also like from the region, there is like now recently there's a war. So I'm Russian, Ukrainian, it's like, and um, 
it's uh, b- b- being a good thing. And here's like the first people feel stable, so they actually willing to pay a bit more. So the same products, you know, like it's selling everywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the second thing, they really appreciate what you say in Arabization. Exactly. <laughs> it's like 100%. It's, 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 so understanding that how, how, how it should work for like people here. It's like it's, it's the key thing. And I think it's the, the, the great, the great, um, the great advantage between if, if you, for example, small, if you're just one person, but you know what you are doing, 100%. you definitely you can be uh, more efficient than you know like big Chinese guys who have money but they don't have understand it. They, they they know how to build the system, but uh, you know like then it comes to like one product game, one like in like private label game. You know mm-hmm. like lots of it's actually it's not only it's, it's it's not only you know like chinese sellers losing it's actually everyone who does who don't understand like the local 100%. people and you know like the 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 the, the local needs so it's like i guess this is this is the back thing um great uh Amazing. and um we talk a lot of the marketplace sellers and what they're saying they actually um say that marketplace here for example amazon they kill the margin uh, and they kill like the, 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 the game is like 80% supposed to be sold by Amazon itself. Mm-hmm. So once they see the product who's like flying below their radars, 100%. they doing yeah. a go the, the, the same thing. So I guess this is why Shopify is great, great way. Uh, and maybe not, not, not so many people that understand and but for me, like sh- f- from my understanding, Shopify is like so much work because <laughs> then I started in e-commerce, it was like 11 years ago. And back then it was like nothing. And like everything was like, uh, like, um, like, like manual, you know, like operation. So 100%. then um, actually like uh, marketplaces, uh, you know, like started become popular and build the infrastructure. I was like so happy because they don't really, you know, like asking people to put the stock, uh, like do fulfillment themselves, customer support, etc. But how do you usually manage the whole system? You mentioned optimization, but you know, like mm-hmm. um, if, if you are one person, like how would you split your time between the processes and you know, like how much money you need to invest and where you need to think to invest, you know, like then you are just, you know, like for example, beginner. It sounds great. So uh, as a start, to start with the question uh, of marketplaces versus Shopify. Yeah. So uh, I would say I'm not a fan of marketplaces at all in terms of to go and sell on marketplaces. Why? Uh, although I love to get data from them yep. because almost, almost half of the population go and buy from them. But there's a misconception in which people think that Shopify is a marketplace. Shopify is not a marketplace. Yep. It's just a tool which helps you to go and build your site. So almost 10 years ago, if you wanted to, to go and build your site, you needed to pay at least $5,000. And it's very, very, very hard. And you always need to be attached with the coder who built it because you have to go back and forth every time you want to make an edit. Almost five, six years ago, we had a couple of solutions like WordPress, like other things, but still it wasn't very friendly. Yep. Now, because of Shopify, and I'm 100% sure, and it's not only on my course, like I have a full chapter which teaches you how to build your store from A to Z mm-hmm. in like three days. Like like the last brand I started, I decided to go and make the actual site with my own hands. Hey, uh, I'd replenish my, uh, my expertise uh, uh, and skills and building Shopify, I swear to God, it took me only 45 minutes. And, wow. and it's not only me. I believe that Shopify needs to get this credit because it's a solution which even if you don't know a single line of code, you can build your site. Yep. So, so it's very easy. It's much easier than people think. And uh, uh, it, 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 it makes almost 90% of the job for a very cheap price, like for only $29 as the smallest package, uh, you can actually go and build your site alone in like three days. So <clears throat> why I'm not a fan of Amazon and all of those marketplaces as to go and sell as a merchant, because in my business model and what I chose is, is, uh, is private labeling and not mm-hmm. a quick flip or a quick cash. So if you want a quick cash, I would highly advise you to go for drop shipping or for Amazon FBA or Noon FBN or all of those programs. 
because you don't care about the brand. You don't care about this brand, which I'm not saying it's wrong. It's your right. If you don't want to open a brand and you just want to open a brand for like three, four months and make some money and then flip it and uh, go to something mm -hmm. else, it's good for you. But if you want to do what I do, I do private labeling. I find those right products. I private label them. I Arabize them here in the, mm -hmm. uh, in the region and I grow these brands to seven and eight figures to even either hopefully exit it after three, four years or to go and keep on scaling it. So this, if you wanted to, to go and uh, and sell those products and to go in this path, which I'm teaching, Amazon would kill you because mm -hmm. the main reason is it's purely price oriented. So what makes a brand special, it's its added value, its quality, its branding, and all of this. On Amazon, most of the competition is price oriented. And the smallest example I can give is that when you want to search for a product, like for example, if I go and search for mics, I will have like a hundred mics on the same page and the main indicator, besides reviews, of course, is the price. So the first thing people look at is the price. So when the, 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 like the whole competition is price oriented, it would devaluate your brand. It would let every co-founder or, or business owner to focus a lot on the price, like rather than focusing on increasing value on, on their business. And of course, I think Amazon probably takes between 15 to 30 percent. It depends on the product, which I believe is a huge, huge, huge missing opportunity, which you can reinvest in your business. And, uh, and point number three, as you said, if you make so many sales, Amazon would go uh, in the contract. It's written indirectly. You know, they can go and create the same exact product. And of course, if they own the, the, the entire algorithm, they would always promote indirectly or directly yep. a main product for a massive profit margin. So why would I do that? If I can own my website, if I can own my product, my brand, I don't care about price oriented, uh, uh, competition, yani. and I just focus on, on the quality and improving my quality and meeting my end users needs. Mm -hmm. And that's why mainly I'm not a fan of, uh, of marketplaces in my case, again, if you're drop shipping or if you want a very quick flip, Amazon FBA might actually be one of the best business models that you can do oh, if yeah. you do not want to build a brand and scale it for later on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I like agree with you, but although partially because, you know, like I see like lots of uh, sellers actually building the brand uh, in um, marketplaces and uh, Shopify, for example, for US, usually the model is like 50 50 for many of okay. private labels. They're like they're trying to do both uh, because, you know, like there's a lot of customers, you know, like you can reach and you don't need to do any marketing. Of course. So it, it's, it's, it's both has, you know, like pros and cons. Of but, course. but, uh, <laughs> no worries. yeah, but uh, you, you, you're right about like beginning beginners at, at this stage i guess you know like if you're mar if you go to marketplace you don't need to care more about like fulfillment and you know like all of this of custom support you know mm -hmm. like all of these processes but if you are um, uh, for example shopify seller if you go to shopify you get more margin uh, you need to focus like on few things at the same time, for example, of traffic course. products, you know, like logistic, everything, but margin. And I think the other thing that is not in the region. Yes, I get, I guess, is there that you can sell it to actually the company. Uh, I didn't know like uh, people who in the US is very big thing. Um, I have a friend, he was selling like uh, coffee machines. Mm -hmm. uh, he was actually a dropshipper. Okay. And he sold his brand like for a few hundred thousand USD, just, you know, like sold us as a business, you know, like as exists as this wow. business. So it's like actually the, the, the exit, then you can actually you get take the capital outside of your business and actually understand you know, like what's your next move. And 100%. it's like it's going to be not like beginner. hundred <laughs> percent. No, of course, of course, Yanni, Yanni. Uh, it does has its, uh, its pros. Uh, and and uh, and of course, like like if Amazon or like other marketplaces who want to take up to 20, 30 percent of your cut, it means, of course, they have yeah. like, like a lot of things to offer, which is amazing. But the thing is, you know, I believe as a start, you have time mm -hmm. and uh, and you should go and uh, and at least invest 12 to 16 hours a day. So I would save those 20, 30 percent. I would focus as long as you want to open a brand of, yep. of course, of course. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but uh, here's the question. What to do with the marketing? 
because like so far uh, we've got like for example lots of uh, Facebook account blocked mm -hmm. and uh, many dropshippers and you know like uh, like actually businesses you know like in different niches uh, facing the issue with budgets mm -hmm. for example those few weeks you can just you know like uh, do marketing for like $50 a day True. like $20 a day you know like Facebook doesn't give you opportunity to, 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 to like get more traffic um, influencers uh, it's an interesting thing, but you know, like I think you know, know, know about, more about that. And what other channels are working, especially in the region, and you know, like and, and in general, I guess. Amazing. So uh, as a start, when you want to start to go and uh, and market your product, you have two lanes. You have the organic, and you have a paid. I believe both are as equally important. So when it comes to organic, which is a low cost one or almost free. It takes a lot of time yep. when it comes to paid it's fast results but it's more expensive so i believe you keep on doing both up until you reach to a place where word of mouth would would actually do almost most of the job so i believe when it comes to the organic part being active on social media it's free it's free yeah, to go and uh, create content and especially that all of all of uh oh, of our platforms like Instagram or TikTok are rewarding smart and creative content creators. Yep. And what do I mean by reward? I mean by to go and push your content into more people. So if you're creative and you get creative with creating content for your products, you will have the chance to be seen by a lot of people, which is something you had to pay for in order to do. So uh, when it comes to organic, of course, it's one, it's content creation on all platforms. Two is SEO. SEO is one of, of one of the hardest yet the most rewarding like marketing strategies in which you can do, but it needs a lot of time, but of course focus on it. When it comes to paid, one is Facebook ads. I believe in Facebook ads a lot. And uh, a lot of people also have a misconception and know if I do Facebook ads, I get sales. No, what Facebook ads does is that it shows your product or your brand or your ads to people who don't know about you, to people who don't follow you. So it's not only I pay Facebook and I get in back sales. There are a lot of things you need to do. And that's one thing I actually teach in the course. You know, before finding a solution, you need to indicate the problem. Okay. Because sometimes the problem is the ad, or sometimes it's the structure of the ad, or sometimes oh, wow. it's the actual video, or the song, or the text, yeah. or the caption, or the headline, or your landing page, or your cart page, or your checkout page, or your after purchase uh, uh, or program. So we have an entire sales funnel which starts from the second anyone sees your ad so you need to indicate her problem so a lot of people who in most cases are lazy people would go would spend ten dollars on facebook ads oh i didn't get sales close it no yep. facebook ads i have access to a lot of friends and big leaders in the e-commerce space who spend up to 10 20 30 even 50 million dollars a year wow. on ads uh, i spend anything between 100k to 300k a year so, so I believe Facebook ads is there to stay. It's, and, and, and it's not, it's not, it's not rocket science. Yeah. I need to show my ads to people and Facebook ads have told me if you pay me and you choose all of the right structure and you have a great website, a great ad, I will do the job and show you. And Facebook algorithm is very smart. Like go now and do any ad in the world and keep it broad with yep. no interest. Keep it broad with no interest, with no anything. It's not that I recommend this. I actually have my own Facebook ad strategy. But here's a test to test how smart his algorithm is. Do an ad with a broad interest. Open the H till the end and, uh, and just choose a country. You will see in, on the first day, you will get close to zero results. On the second and third day, uh, and third day you will start to get more results yep. and the right people start to see your ad. So if you're doing ads for makeup, people who actually buy makeup online will start seeing it. Why? Because the Facebook algorithm understands based on who was interacting with your ads, it would start optimizing this ad for the right people. So it's helping you reach yep. those right people. Of course, Google ads is great. Even TikTok ads is great right now. Snapchat ads is great. It depends on the region. Yani, for example, I'd leverage Snapchat ad a lot in Saudi Arabia. I wouldn't do it in Beirut, Lebanon because clo almost no one uses it there. Okay. So oh. it, de yani, it depends on each region. Uh, and of course, when it comes to the bans, I do understand why Facebook would ban you or why would 
it would do such thing because Facebook has a huge responsibility uh, of preventing people from being scammed. And we both know that it's much easier to scam through dropshipping than you know, to, to scam if you actually have a warehouse and yep. an infrastructure and a, and a legal entity. Uh, so, so, of course, and if, at least every dropshipper I know, he doesn't have the intentions of scamming. Yep. But for Facebook to hold this responsibility, of course, they're much more skeptical when it comes to dropshippers. So I do understand why they will allow you to spend uh, uh, slowly up until you build this trust. But at the same time, straight underground stuff, you can go and purchase an agency account. I, I've actually added, uh, added contacts in my program in which you can go and rent agency accounts from agencies, which will okay. allow you to go and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars yep. from day one. So, uh, yeah, so, so of course there are a lot of alternatives, but if you wanted to stick to your ads manager account and all of this and, you, uh, and you're just starting fresh, of course, I do understand on why Facebook might actually block you or be a little bit more restrictive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that, 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 that's great. This is very interesting. And it's interesting insight about the mm. Snapchat mm -hmm. that probably, I don't know, like what the price for Snapchat, you know, like versus, uh, I don't know, uh, Facebook, no, mm -hmm. I guess for Saudi Arabia, there are no Facebook or, or Instagram. Uh, uh, it's, it's there, it's, but, but it's, it's not, not, not very, very popular. Well. Okay, yes, especially uh, uh, on Facebook. And yeah, in Saudi Arabia, what I believe is leading uh, is actually all three, Snapchat and TikTok and Instagram. Mm -hmm. But there's no room for Facebook there. Even in my yeah, country, yeah. usually who uses Facebook are a little bit above yeah. almost 35 to 40, 50 years old. Uh, Which is uh, also a great niche. Yeah, of course, it's, 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 a, it's a wonderful niche uh, if you tailor for them. So uh, yeah, yani, yani, it depends. But I believe that every four or five years, we have a new trend. Mm -hmm. So like back in my days, when I just started, it was all about ads. Who spends more would get more rewarded. Yep. Now, which is actually beautiful, since 2018, 19, up until now, which is three, four years, we can notice that the most creative in content creation gets rewarded. So yep. now it's actually much more easier for you to start and make sales. I have a friend who was actually a dropshipper. He did, he did a couple of TikTok videos and one of them went viral and over 30 million views. He was selling in the UK. He wow. sold out 15,000. It was, if I'm not mistaken, a lamp, a moon lamp, which like floats. Yep. He sold over 15,000 of them wow. without spending a single dollar. Because I believe that, you uh, know, Halla is the era of content creators. Yep. Right now is the era of content creators. So, so like, if you focus there, if you get creative, if you if you get inspired by other trends happening outside, I believe you still have a chance if you were on a very tight budget to start. Even if you had a big budget, be creative because no one would say yeah, you know, I, I, like, I would doubt have... that Apple or Nike would mind actually going viral for free. Yeah. So so uh, it's a, it's a blessing and uh, it's out there. It's it's uh, it's very easy and simple. Hala Akid, there are a lot of tips and tricks like to have a great hook in the first three seconds and uh, and like all of this. I've talked about all of them in the course. But in in parallel, I believe the number one trick or tip is being creative. Mm -hmm. original and creative if you are then i think the algorithm is going to reward you and thus it would be reflected on your sales wow that, 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 that's great that's great so basically it's like uh some people saying like oh guys of course you started like so many years ago you have so much experience but you know uh it's, it shows like that every time has its own beauty and even though you know like marketing costs mo more now paid mm -hmm. marketing more cost more but you know like you still have you know like lots of uh channels to optimize uh the actual final price of your order by you know like content 100%. creation sir yeah, that's great. And um, it uh, also shows, before the, before the video, we talked that you, your, your school started actually from 12 people. Mm -hmm. um, I have the same experience. Um, I used to run uh, e-commerce courses, e-commerce analytics courses, and uh, we had like, um, they had very good course, you know, like um, NPS, like mm -hmm. people love it but uh we didn't have uh like uh, hundreds of people we had like 
the other pricing was higher uh like but but but, but it doesn't matter the question is like then i saw that i'm running the game for like six months and i have like each time i have less than 50 people in the class okay. i have like 30 something i even though i i know this is like it's it's profitable i don't want to spend time on this because you know like it's like i i'm like personally like doing like focus i, I like focus on the thing on one thing like for like three years i'm doing like uh data analysis and like i, I don't do anything else okay. so but for you it's like first i guess you're very determined like you you're, you're really you know like you see the niche you see the th good thing you know it's just you go you go for that it's like and uh, you are like working very hard you know like doesn't if it doesn't like it like very 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 successful Thanks. and you know like it's like it's, it's amazing like what kind of results you are achieving you know Thank like you for, for, for the years and um and it's very interesting you know like uh how you can manage so many things in that time because you know like it's like for normal people for most of the people so it's like it's a very hard thing so what do you think what kind of um who should be entrepreneur mm -hmm. and what kind of what you need to have inside of you you know like Amazing. to be in the game like what is like what come when it comes to your personality I love this question, actually, and uh, I always answer it in the same exact way, which is, it's my personal opinion, I believe that you're either born as an entrepreneur or not. You know, I believe if you were to be an entrepreneur, the moment you were born, you have a small seed in your, in your heart, which is entrepreneurship seed. Yeah, you either grow it through time mm -hmm. and it becomes a big tree of entrepreneurship or it stays as a seed. But if you do not have the seed, I believe entrepreneurship is, n is not for you. And it's not wrong. Almost most of my family have jobs. So, so, so it's not that it's wrong or right. How, how I see it in my own life, of course, I, would, I, I won't get a job in my life. It's not because I would, I, I would go and bash it. It's because it, it does not fit me. I believe that anything I want, if I put my mind into it, if I work really hard for it, I can achieve it. And uh, I believe in something, which is if there's someone else who, who did it, there's absolutely no reason or excuse for me to not do it. And now in this age, in 2022, almost 2023, we see kids, 12 years old yep. and 14 years old, making millions of dollars from e-commerce, from crypto or whatever it is. So it makes you think, you know, if they can make it, there's absolutely no reason why I don't. And the biggest mistake is when people start to justify failures, which means... And I see this a lot in my country, unfortunately, which is if someone's rich, they automatically say, you know, ah, his dad is already yeah, yeah, rich. Exactly. If someone's rich, they say, you know, ah, his, his uncle was in Africa 12 years ago and he got all of the gold and I don't know what. So they always find excuses, but this is wrong yep. because you're trying to tell yourself, you know, ah, Hal uh, has something which I won't ever have. I won't ever have a father who's rich. I won't ever have an uncle who went to Africa. No. They're richer. Anyone who's richer than you is because they either worked harder or smarter. Minnak. There's a lot of added external factors which no one would say no. Like me, eight, nine years ago, my family went bankrupt. Of course, I'd wish if it didn't happen. Hala, it turned out to, to be a great outcome because I believe I'm now here because of what happened with us. But of course, if I can go back in time, I wouldn't have wished to go through everything if I knew it was going to happen. So, so... So everyone would say yes for those external factors. But people, because they're lazy, they mm -hmm. just tend to like go and justify. So I believe when it comes to entrepreneurship, you're either born with it or not. But even if you're born with the entrepreneurship seed, you either grow it or not. Mm -hmm. So uh, and how do you grow it? Is by, you have to take risks. <laughs> you have to take risks. I remember the first yep. time I told you about my first product, mm -hmm. when I started it, I barely had $300 on me and we were still in debt. And I didn't have a job. So, wow. so, so, yes, I did take the risk. I didn't think, no, if it didn't work out, I'm completely back to zero. Even, even worse with that. I thought, no, no, if it works, yes. <laughs> I can make millions and close my family debt and do all of this. So, so, uh, and, and yeah, I failed in a lot of things before I started e-commerce. I was a freelancer. I used to take very cheap, like I used to, to, to go and build sites and do ads and Google ads and all of this for barely $100 a month. So I, I did accept that because I was poor. It's that simple. So of course, it's taking risks. 
it's not justifying failures and not always finding excuses. It's taking responsibility. There's a lot of times where, where like, for example, our sales go down a lot. Even though I know where the mistake is, I don't go and blame. I take full responsibility. I'm, I'm leading this ship. So if someone goes and fucks up, sorry, I have to take responsibility. Yep. So I have to take her responsibility because I hired them or I wasn't there or to tell them, you know, like you had to do this or that. So always take responsibility, always take risks, always surround yourself with the right people. With the, this is one of the best tips I could ever give. Wow. Best gift. I changed my entire circle, my entire circle completely to be able to reach here. And now every time I go a stage in life, my entire circle changes again. I do have, of course, close friends and family who, who always stick with me. But when it comes to business relations and contacts, they always change the higher I go or the lower I go. So, so uh, yes, of course, surrounding like yourself is a really important thing. And just don't find excuses. Like I'll put this one on top because the moment you find excuses, you're telling yourself there's yep. no way I can do it. That's great. Yeah, and the, the, the last tip is actually, it's also uh, very interesting and it reflects what you're actually doing. Mm -hmm. Because I guess f outside of the e-commerce, you also have like um, Metapreneurs, I guess, yes. club. Yes, yes. Uh, and can you tell us more about that? Like, what is that? Of Why course. you started? Perfect. And and then and what's the value for people there, actually? Amazing. And for, and for you. <laughs> yeah, of course. So, uh, amazing question. So. Besides my e-commerce businesses, uh, as mentioned, like first I have my e-commerce program, which uh, as you said, in 2019, it started with only 12 people. Mm -hmm. In 2022, I just opened it for 10 days and we, we got over 1,600 people. Alhamdulillah, we have great reviews and that's what keeps on getting people and more people and more people in. So besides e-commerce and, uh, and my e-commerce program, uh, um, I do have shares in a leading VR agency in mm -hmm. the entire region. And we just opened uh, a huge esports and e-gaming and VR, uh, uh, like, I don't know how to explain it, but it's uh, it's like a three floor building. It's wow. it's insane in Abu Dhabi. I, I would highly advise anyone to go and check it. Wow. Uh, and, um, and the whole agency is called Robocom. Mm -hmm. And this project is, is like under Robocom. It's mm -hmm. pixel gaming. Mm -hmm. It's insane. I, wow. I would highly invite anyone who's in Abu Dhabi to go and check it out. Uh, Al Qana is the place as well. Besides Robocom and my Wolf of Bay engine and my e-commerce brands, uh, I'm a co-founder of an entrepreneur's NFT project. It's called Metapreneurs. It's one of the best things that I was ever able to create with my partner, Roberto. We actually created something which is the same thing you see right now inside my program, uh, inside my e-commerce program, but for almost all things entrepreneurs. And instead of just e-commerce and my program, you have a space where you can go and, and connect with over 6,000 people, all of them aligned and to do the same direction. Wow. All of them help each other. We have courses about real estate, crypto, trading, e-commerce, dropshipping, everything. We have in real life events. And we're onboarding people into Web3. I believe that Web3 and a lot, I, I just feel sad when I see people who, yeah. who make fun of this entire blockchain technology just because one or two NFT projects flopped mm -hmm. uh, or like uh, a crypto coin crashed. The same exact thing used to, ho like to happen back in 2000s when the internet bubble started. Yep. The same exact thing. And everyone used to make fun of it. You know, who's going to shop through the internet? Who's going to read through the internet? <laughs> we already have newspapers. We yeah. already have stores. And look where we are right now. Yep. And COVID actually proved it. Yep. The only people who survived are the ones who had online presence. Yep. Uh, if it's blogs or e-commerce stores or whatever it is. So the same exact thing is happening again. I believe with the power of the blockchain and DeFi and, uh, and crypto, of course, as a mean of payments, and at the same time, NFTs will shape our entire life probably 10 years from now, which mm -hmm. is actually close. So we were a first mover when it comes to entrepreneurship in Web3. And we were able to onboard with us 6,000 entrepreneurs into this space. Wow, it's, we're teaching it's them about great. Web3. They have access to courses, events, and a lot of more perks alongside yani, a lot of Web2 and Web3 perks, which they're enjoying throughout their 
like their entire journey. And yes, so uh, I believe NFTs and crypto are not only here to stay, they're here to take over. I mm -hmm. really, really, really believe that decentralized finance is how me, you and everyone in the world is going to do finance and exchanges in the next 10 to 20 years. I, I agree, but uh, it's like it's uh, for for me like my understanding of crypto actually started then. Um, I have had a lot of like I had like most of them my cards like Russian bank cards, and from the night you know like because of sanctions you know like mm -hmm. Visa they turn off um, actually they turn off uh, uh, services for Russians for mm -hmm. people with Russian passport and. Um, I was nine months pregnant. Ooh. I had all of my money in Russia. Okay. And I was like, you know, I was in Dubai actually, okay. which is not like cheap city to live. Not at all. <laughs> and I was like, I was freaking my brains, you know, like how I can get money out, you know, like it's like, uh, yeah, that's uh, uh, very easily. Like in two, in two weeks, I started to be like a crypto adapter, you know, like I just. <laughs> It's, it's, it's like it's like very, very quickly you know like i transformed you know like and now uh it's uh like lots of lo 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 lots of funds you know like still still 100%. there and uh I, I was i was surprised how you can be you know like uh how you can you can transition you know like that quickly that quickly and that's a hundred percent and and it's the same exact thing which happened in our country like i don't know if you've heard but we have one of the worst economic crises after venezuela Yep. Hala, happening in Beirut, all of people's money have been stuck in the banks, all yep. of them. Hala, I did not have anything in the banks back then, alhamdulillah, but almost everyone did. And who had $20,000 or $50,000 or $100,000 or even $20,000, $30,000, $40 million have been stuck in the bank. This wouldn't have happened mm -hmm. if you're using yeah. crypto. Yeah. And that's how I moved almost all of my fortune from Lebanon to Dubai. So, so, and that's the entire beauty of it. And there's a lot of people who come and say, yes, but it's a door for money laundering. Now, if you go to the stats and see, look, uh, I, 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 I wish if, if I had the exact article with me right now, because I just read it a couple of weeks ago, but it says that like Akbar percentage of money laundry happening in the world right now still happens through banks. So yeah. if you're trying to defend banks in the uh, uh, in the face of, of crypto because of this one point, you know, it enhances money laundry and yeah. like all of this and cartels, I would tell you, you know, even before crypto was there, we would find all of this illegal stuff. So so in anything in the world, you will have people who will use it ethically or unethically. Yep. So I believe with the speed and the transaction fees and the no control of people on it, of course, of course, of course, crypto is the best mean of, of, of exchange of money, which we'll ever witness in the upcoming years. Well, wow. yeah, that, that that's great, and and I hope that the business you're running, because you know, like basically, what else I see that uh, you get money uh, from e-commerce, mm -hmm. and then money still goes through kind of real estate, because you know, like what you guys build in is actually it's not like nft you know like in metaverse things mm -hmm. it's actual you know like real estate business in many ways mm -hmm. uh it has topic it has you know like a uh, theme uh, uh you know like and it has like lots of you know like amazing stuff like community and sarah but the use you know like use case is still you know like uh very you know like real business you know like then 100%. you open real location and you know like uh it's it's, it's still you you like this is the money circling <laughs> like from uh, yes 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 100 percent. and and uh, i do i do like me as jad personally uh i hate saving money and uh, it's the reason why i didn't have a single dollar stuck in the banks in lebanon um uh, after the whole crisis happened because i don't leave cash on me mm -hmm. i always reinvest whether it's in crypto whether it's in nfts whether it's in uh, like new products or existing products I have in big inventories, whether it's in any, any, any new venture I want to explore, my money is always working. It loses sometimes, it wins a lot of times, but as long as it's working, it's the only way which I would expect my money to grow and to increase in value. So um, yeah, of course, 
as you mentioned as you mentioned yani, yani especially like if it comes to nfts or to any other venture i believe reinvesting your money is one of the mm-hmm. best things which a lot of people think is it's a risk but i think the biggest risk is actually keeping yeah, them in the bank yeah, it's true. because of what happened with you because of what happened with a lot of people from my country uh, and because of inflation like if i yeah, keep it yeah, there yeah, exactly. it stays in the same dollar value but you cannot buy with the same amount so yep. i believe the biggest risk is actually keeping your money in the bank and not having room for it to grow it's that simple yeah the, and yeah it's it's great it's like the risk management it's like th- that's like lots of people especially like the f- like very you know like um very like um i would say not not like not like poor mindset <laughs> it, it's the wrong i guess uh saying but uh, i mean like the very i call you know, it a like fixed mindset fixed mi- okay yes. <laughs> great <laughs> yeah the fixed mindset that uh they, they don't understand because it's like similar uh, as an e-commerce for example like you're selling like in marketplace and shopify you need to know your unit economy you need to know your uh you know like return rate 100%. you need to know you know like basically what's the risk and there's always that, that, that's, a risk yeah. of course even 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 as you mentioned and like e-commerce I, I would ask you a question how many people have you seen in dubai in the last year holding an umbrella close to zero <laughs> exactly so if i go and buy a huge container of umbrellas <laughs> on a very low price and try to sell them in dubai it's stupid even if it's not crypto or if it's not nfts uh, which people call risky but as you mentioned, risk management should always be there, especially in, in, in e-commerce. And that's why I, I always tell my students also, you know, don't sell what you might use or not use. Yep. Try to sell what the market needs. So if I had a huge container of umbrellas and it's not being sold, I would change my entire place. I would go to a lot of places like the UK or, or Beirut, like, like because yep. we have at least five months of winter yep. there or four months of winter. So, so of course, risk management plays a major 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 role in anything especially e-commerce as long as you're reinvesting reinvest and take smart smart moves yeah that, that that's great and also you know like it's also says a lot of education this is what we started originally uh that uh you said that you better you know like buy 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 the course and you know like do their uh your study with someone who already been on this journey and it's actually it's uh everything comes at the price so mm-hmm. you, you you just learning and it, 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 it you never know like what gonna be cost you more or like real experience or like the course or like but the the, the thing is like uh, I guess in you said the right thing you need to learn it doesn't matter from free services from uh, you know like paid courses it's like it's all you know like get back to yourself who you are what your mindset and uh, of course, I guess your action, you know, like if you're determined 100%. as a dad, <laughs> if 100%. you're hardworking and if, if, if you actually uh, can like willing to make it happen, I guess, without any excuse. If there's a will, of course, there's a way. I'm 100 percent sure about that. And uh, as oh, I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, if like, like, like everyone can get motivated in a way, my main dose of motivation is that if I see someone else who's done it, mm-hmm. there's absolutely no way on earth why I shouldn't do it. Yep. He has a rich dad, he has a huge advantage, he's the son of a president, I don't care. If yep. he did it, there's absolutely no reason why I cannot do it. Yep. And that's my only proof of why I should get into something or not. Yeah, that's great. So uh, that was great conversation. Thank you very much for joining today. Uh, and uh, hopefully we will see lots of your content. Um, uh, subscribe to uh, Jad's Instagram. Uh, unfortunately, he doesn't really work on his YouTube channel. <laughs> but I just have one video. <laughs> just one. <laughs> yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much for my interview. Thank you so, so much for having me. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you.